Welcome back, Blade fans. This old sword with you, and we've got yet a different theme for you today. I entitled this one Pointy, Stabby, Pokey, <laughs> or something along those lines. I think I've actually named it something different, but you get the point. Haha. -ha. This one is about stabby knives, about sharp, pointy knives as opposed to blunt, obtuse knives, cleaver knives, and others that aren't quite so pointy as these guys. Let's give you a better look. I'm sure you're wondering. So there we have today's collection of pointy stabby knives from a variety of manufacturers. And what qualifies these knives today to be part of this group? Just having a really nice fine point. Now these may not be the best knives for your all around EDC because if you need to do a little bit of prying that may not work for you. You could break a tip. These are more meant for tactical use, you might say. Certainly they can take care of some everyday cutting chores. Um, you might have one or two of these. Anyway, let's move through them. And here's one of my favorites in the category. This is the Malware by Bestech, designed by Todd Knife and Tool. It is light, it is stabby, it is about four inches. They happen to also build a wonderful full finger choil into it that locks you into where you can't cut your finger on that blade, or at least not very easily, unless you're trying. This particular one comes with a carbon fiber scale on one side, titanium on the other, and a brass finished or anodized clip in the typical Todd knife and tool design. It's a frame lock, has excellent action for a light bladed knife. It's very easy to open in a variety of ways, three at least that I know of, with your thumb, with the flipper, or with the spidey flick. Just an interesting and menacing looking blade. Lots of detail and appointments all the way around. Very typical of the design coming out of that shop, Todd Knife and Tool, in great execution by Best Tech, of course. A similar one from Artisan. And this is the Archeo. And this is a design by Dylan Mallory. I had a look on the blade to remind me of his name. And uh, this has gotten a lot of different versions. This is the D2 Econo version. Picked this up quite a long time ago. For a knife having such a long slender point, it carries the blade stock thickness out there quite a ways. I need to pull a focus on this. Come on. Boy, it's just not behaving. There we go. See that thickness? That's pretty good for a pointy knife. It's a liner lock on this one. Hidden liners. Almost wide open construction. Got some excellent jimping on the frame as well as some really excellent jimping on the blade. Again, I said uh, D2. And there you got your Artisan logo and all your information on the other side about the maker. There we go. I believe that's Dylan's logo. It's a cool knife, and there are upper-end versions of this in the $200 range. This one here, I think you can pick them up for around 50 bucks or so, something like that. Um, 
I had sharpened this up on the KME and it took uh, quite a nice edge even though you've got a relatively steep grind there. Thick blade and we're starting at about two-thirds of the way up but uh, it will cut for sure. One of my favorites again keep saying that but um, that's because I forget the ones remaining and some of the ones remaining definitely are my favorites for various reasons. This is the Benchmade Fact F-A-C-T and it is an axis locking knife with a very nice fast action. Uh, aluminum handle, heavily textured. They make some nice scales for this um, aftermarket, but you're going to pay for them. They're going to be like uh, uh, 60, 70, 80 bucks. Uh, they make them out of uh, various materials like uh, carbon fiber and titanium, I think, and what have you. I have seen them out there. I'm pretty happy with it uh, in the stock version. Uh, skeletonized straight through makes the knife a very light deep carry clip and this was a nice job by Benchmade it's a shorter deep carry clip it's a little different than their typical Benchmade clips uh, extremely lightweight uh, if you wanted to know more about each one of these if you had a particular favorite here I've got uh, reviews up on each on the channel, so just check them out. You can search for them by name, F-A-C-T. Double thumb stud, and this is a real stabby piercy knife for sure. Uh, this was this is in S30V. They now make an auto version of it going for like 450 bucks, and uh, I think they upped the game uh, on that with the steel. But beautiful grind. And quite a point on this one. Um, they do manage to keep the stock um, pretty thick, considering. I mean, that's not like hair fine or anything like that. But still, it is designed as a, a tactical thrusting weapon for sure. Here's an interesting one. This is the Ranger by Max Ace. And um, it's a recurve with a long arrow kind of spear point blade. Um, it is over four inches, as I recall, like close to four and a quarter inches. Max Ace is known to make some large knives, witness the Goliath II and the Sandstorm, uh, amongst my favorite large knives that are pocketable, usable large knives. Um, not that cold steel isn't, but I don't know. I don't carry too many of those um, extra large size cold steels even though I've got them so uh, coming in a little over four inches got a nice swale for the thumb there um, very nice ergos the knife looks maybe a little odd but feels quite nice in the hand point up or point down if you need a little extra reach that is the one and the steel on this is different it is from XW42. I believe that's a German stainless, close to 440 in qualities. How about the concept designed by Max Kachuk? I'm supposed to pronounce it Kachuk, sorry. Max Kachuk. And this is the lucky star. And how different is this normally tantos I uh, don't wouldn't call them long and piercy and pointy but boy this really really is and it's like a tanto on steroids that got stretched long I mean look at that tip but look at the beef you've got the reinforcement you've got out near the end the three holes lighten up the blade and I uh, believe there is millwork inside. It's a titanium handle. 
Uh, this one, I believe, is... Um, what did they make this one out of? That's the Lucky Star. S35VN. So this is a more premium version of something that they call the Prickle, which comes in both the Tonto and a Drop Point. This is probably the air weight of the bunch. Very close in weight to the uh, Benchmade Fact, I would say. It is a front flipper with a huge run of jimping. Very tactile, grippy jimping. Long slender handle, but you know, you can wrap your fingers around it pretty well. And you got some nice jimping on the back strap. Call it a backspacer. Okay. You win. <laughs> Not a deep carry clip, but titanium through and through. It is just a crazy blade as far as being a pointy, piercy, stabby, pokey kind of a knife. We're going to finish up with a Russian designed knife by Dagger Knives. And, um, Excuse me while I cheat and look at my phone. I forgot the name of this guy, but as soon as I read it, I'm going to say, oh, yeah, that's what it was. So um, this one is the Sting, and it's got a 3.9-inch blade of D2. This is quite the company, if you haven't checked them out yet. Um, these were specials from uh, Blade HQ for a while, but I think you can now get them elsewhere. This one's got a natural JG10 handle, which I kind of like in combo with that blacked out, stonewashed D2 blade. Very comfortable. Has uh, it their signature Screaming Skull clip. That has got to be the wildest, craziest clip on a production knife I have ever seen. And I don't know if you can see it, but the screws underneath are blue, so they, uh, with the right light on them, they, they shine blue through the two holes. <laughs> it's well done for a uh, novelty sort of a clip that does work and is deep carry. That's the Dagger Knives Sting, and they're known for their arrowhead shape on their blades. This one's a single grind. Um, Stock's not too thick, so we've got a pretty fine edge on there. And uh, pretty good stock thickness all the way out. Um, nice action on it. Doesn't matter which way you open it. If you're used to Spydercos, you will like this knife because it's set up very much the same. And Dagger is spelled with two G's and two R's if you're ever looking it up. I'll put links to all of these knives in the description. I believe they're all still available in one form or another. I'd be surprised if they aren't. This might be the only one that's hard to find, the Ranger, but White Mountain does uh, carry these, and I did re-get this from White Mountain. Uh, by the way, uh, recently a viewer asked if I buy all my own knives and uh, or get them from other sources and uh, my answer was that 99% uh, of the knives that you see reviewed I did buy so not uh, obliging to anyone to give them a special kind of a favorable review uh, one way or the other so um, I think as Nick Shabazz says uh, if I have to borrow his term I will the good bad and the ugly <laughs> is uh, I don't run across too much that I totally dislike, so can't really say that. But thank you, Nick, for letting me borrow your uh, your term there, your description. Okay, we're going to be signing out. Don't want to make this video too long, but um, I thought this was interesting that we have some knives here that are extremely long and pointy, the stabby, pokey knives. Okay, don't forget to give this video a like, if you would, and subscribe. This Old Sword, signing out.